The air is thick with pollution. The streets, well, they're lined with trash. And the only sound you hear is the constant honking of car horns. This is what a city would look like if we didn't begin recycling in the 1970s. However, we realize that if we could reuse, instead of waste the materials around us, we could live in a green and hopeful future. Well, today, we're not climbing over trash to walk down the sidewalk, but we still live in cities where physical barriers promote the loss of green space, displace animals from their local habitats, encourage car use, and overall harm our environment. I don't know about you, but this doesn't sound like the hopeful green future that recycling was supposed to bring about, does it? But what if I told you that we were wasting a key resource, a resource that could bring about this hopeful future, save our cities, and help us become stewards of our planet? This resource can be used to improve transparency and accountability within governments, empower sustainable policymaking, build green cities, and was even used to generate all of the images by artificial intelligence that you see on my screen today. Yes, all of these were generated by AI. I'm talking about data. You're probably thinking, well, what the heck does data have to do with developing our towns and cities, let alone recycling? Well, let's get something straight here. Unlike here in the US, there are countries around the world that are beginning to use data-driven approaches to expansion and urban development. China, for example, has launched urbanization initiatives that use artificial intelligence to focus on rapid economic development and growth. Their goal is expansion. Expansion optimized for efficiency rather than sustainability, and the result is environmental damage. But China is not alone in their misuse of data. Saudi Arabia is currently building the line, a supposed zero emissions green city that is powered by data. However, this project has come under fire for a number of re reasons, including the destruction of local habitats and the forcible removal of indigenous communities. These examples highlight a fundamental misuse of data that harms our planet. Examples where data and artificial intelligence are controlled by a select few with no democratic oversight, whose only goal is to see unsustainable profit growth no matter the cost. But what if there was an alternative? What if we could leverage our Western democratic beliefs and combine them with artificial intelligence to encourage urban development that is both green and economically viable? The U.S. is in a perfect position to do this, but they're not. Well, we have to ask why. And that's where the recycling comes in. Every time we log on to a, dev a device, every time we log on to it, we generate data. And the internet has become a dumping ground of this data. In fact, within the last two years, we have generated more data than in the entirety of human civilization, and yet we only use less than one half of one percent of it. Your town generates a digital footprint too, but it's lost to the ether of the internet. This footprint is the totality of all of the data that is left behind by the town's residents, schools, governments, and businesses when they use the device. It includes everything from social media posts to online shopping transactions to scientific studies and town records. There are companies out there in the investing space and the advertising space that have used a way to recycle this data. They found a way to recycle it and use it to their advantage. They are able to scrape this data and use it to improve their decision making and minimize risk. That sounds like a perfect solution for city development, but how come we're not using this? Well, it's because this data is not accessible. Until now. We can build an automated system, a local AI that extracts this data from the internet, cleans it, and groups it based on location. An AI that engineers and fuses these disparate data sources together to create explainable insights to empower decision makings. 
These insights can then be used to train more sophisticated models to help us infer green zoning policies and build future cities. Moreover, these models allow for transparent and unbiased information flow. This represents a data recycling system that can be leveraged at the local level, but across the world. This local AI can be even used to help developing countries grow and expand sustainably. This AI has the potential to revolutionize how we interact with the environment around us. It can help us predict population growth, manage environmental patterns, optimize local supply chains, infer migration patterns, and be even used to help inform policymaking. This local AI is able to interpret hyperlocal socioeconomic behaviors and environmental impacts to model the complex symbiotic world we live in. In essence, we are creating a digital twin of nature, a digital twin that allows us how our decisions today impact the world around us. Building this digital twin is only possible using artificial intelligence and in the end, artificial intelligence will allow us to be comprehensive as nature itself. This is what the result of local AI looks like. Easily interpretable insights. The first shows population growth across counties in Iowa. The second shows environmental sentiment based on location. And the last shows environmental strain put on an area due to new development. This is the power of local AI. And we can start at the local level. Our democracy is built on the lifeblood of local governments, and they have an immense amount of power to write and implement policies and regulations the exact opposite of China. This allows us to give the democratization of data and artificial intelligence the ability to reach the world. However, Right now, these governments are segmented and lack information flow. We need to be able to give them the tools to make informed decisions that can positively impact the world around us. This is only done beside, by recycling our data. Again, this is only done by recycling the data we waste. I mean, you can see the quote on the board. If a sewer commissioner notices a lack of data, well, then it must really, really stink. So let's take a look at this case. This sewer commissioner was appointed to a town here in Massachusetts that was struggling with water quality. And he wanted to be able to understand if there was any root causes this to this problem. He would have to look at town policy and uh, local sentiment and really understand what was causing these water quality issues. To do that, he would have to read over 30,000 pages of documents and watch over 5,500 hours of video just to make an informed decision. I don't know about you, but I don't have the time to do that, and neither did he. But by using the advances in natural language processing and localized artificial intelligence, he was able to use local AI to automatically extract insights, some of which are shown on the board right now, of how these policies changed in the past, how the environment was impacted, and how the public felt about those changes. He was able to use this as a basis to make informed decisions about what policies to propose in the future. This was gathered from the internet, and this is the power of you using AI to recycle data. So this example itself shows how inefficient our local governments are yet they have some of the strongest power to implement sustainable transformations. Without using localized artificial intelligence, decisions will continue to be made by gut feelings and by the seat of our pants. However, by leveraging nature's di digital twin, we can give policymakers the ability to anticipate the impacts of their decisions before they are made. This is the basis of the city of the future, but it's just the start. Once we give governments the tools the necessary to tackle these local problems and streamline decision making, we can leverage this network effect to improve collaboration between communities, identify the best ways to implement green policies, and build sustainable cities of the future.
In essence, we are creating information hubs that allow for community intelligence that is democratized and accessible. In the 1970s, we began moving towards this green, hopeful future by recycling. Today, this vision is only attainable if we begin recycling our data. If you want to see this hopeful green future, join with me in encouraging towns and cities across Massachusetts and the U.S. and even the world to grow by using data. This will allow them to grow sustainably. Help them realize that data is not wasted, it's just not being used. And there are tools out there like local AI that can propel us into this green, hopeful future that is economically viable. It will not just save your local town, but it has the potential to save the world itself. Thank you. <laughs>